okay. So yesterday we saw uh, the, the linear partial differential equations uh, with constant coefficients of the form uh, ut uh, plus b plus u equal f, where f was a function of t and x, and b was a vector. And we have seen uh, the, the explicit expression of the initial value problem u equal u bar is at time 0. This, this in the half space. And then the regularity was u in C1. So yesterday we solved this problem, provided that f was C1. OK, also continuous was enough. OK. And also u bar was sufficiently smooth, u C1 also. OK. Uh, let me uh, make just a comment, a geometric comment on the situation that we have. So assume now that for simplicity, f is equal to 0. So we have here the, the, half, the, 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 the line, say, the uh, time equal to 0. So this is t equal to 0. This is x. OK, so this is, uh, uh, this, this, is this horizontal now picture is uh, r to the 1 plus n, say. And then uh, let me draw here the graph of u bar. So your initial condition is defined at time 0. Huh? And uh, um, sorry, this is time. This is time. Uh, so th this is uh, the, the x-axis. This is time. And so we have a, a fi initial condition u bar defined at time equal to 0. And so this is its graph. So we have a new variable here, so we call it y. Hmm. OK. And uh, we, we, we saw yesterday that uh, at a point here, say here you have t and x. Uh, so x here and t here, at this point here, the value of the solution u uh, was the following. I, I take the value of u bar here. Can you remember? So we have here the vector field b, say. So this is the vector field b. b was transverse to b was transverse to sigma, this was called this sigma, time equal to 0. So for instance, in this case, I, this, this b is horizontal in the horizontal plane. Huh? And the value, and here, so I have these lines. And the value here, at this point, at tx here, is exactly the value at, at this x here when I go backward along the line uh, uh, constructed parallel to b. Okay. So you see here in this picture the value, uh, uh, the value of the function u t x is exactly this, the, is the same height. Sorry for the picture, it's not perfect. The height, so the value of y, is exactly the value of u bar at this point. OK? And so I can imagine that I have a sort of, uh, uh, I am con constructing a sort of piece of surface, 
Hmm? With constant tight, in the sense that uh, along this uh, uh, segment, uh, the vertical component is constant. So it's like this. I have a curve, and then I have sort of this uh, constant. Uh, uh. So what I'm constructing here at the end, so given this graph above sigma, uh, I am constructing a piece of surface uh, meeting this graph and continuing a little bit with this property of being high, constant height. Hmm? So this graph, of course, this piece of surface is the graph of the solution u. Hmm? So this is the graph of u. So I repeat it. So I have any point tx. Uh, I look at the value of u bar at this, at this point here, where this point is along the line parallel to b. Hmm? So I take this point here. Maybe yesterday it was called x bar. Hmm? So uh, I have tx, then I go to x bar. I look at the value of u at x bar, of u bar at x bar, and then the value of u at tx is exactly the value of u bar at x bar. Hmm? Okay, and so I, if, I, if I draw this segment, I can do this everywhere, and so I, I can imagine a sort of piece of surface uh, continuing the, the graph of u bar for some time. Hmm? This was the geometric idea of yesterday. And uh, everything was based on a change of variable, say, uh, uh, which, uh, which was constructed uh, solving the, the ODE x dot equal, say, b. Uh, and x of 0 equal x, 0, 0, x bar. So everything was based on the, on the, on the solution of this, which gave the uh, trajectories in this case, lines parallel to B. Hmm? OK. So the notation yesterday, this was called x bar. But it was also called, at some moment, it was also called maybe pi of tx. Hmm? This was, so I, I, I have two notations, maybe x bar, maybe pi of tx. It doesn't matter. OK, so this is the geometric picture of yesterday. OK. Now, today, let us continue with uh, this sort of PDEs uh, with the linear transport equation with f equal to 0, so homogeneous for the moment, but with non-constant coefficients, with non-constant coefficients. So homogeneous means f equal to 0 but with non-constant coefficients. Hmm? So, and, and uh, let, me, let me generalize a little bit. So now you have to be careful because now I use, I change notation. as follows. I don't want to distinguish any more time variable from space variable. OK? So I don't want to give a special role now at t. Here you see it was a special role to t because essentially we had 1 in front of ut here. Uh, OK? Uh, and so this, this system was x dot, more generally x dot equal 1b. But this allows to identify S with T. Uh, but now, now I don't want to, to, uh, to give a special importance to the T variable. So now my notation will be X in our N. And that's it. So X in our N uh, corresponds. So X will be X1, Xn. And yesterday, our notation was yesterday 
how to pass from one notation to the other was n equal 1 plus n. Huh? And uh, uh, x1 was equal, equal to t. This is yesterday. OK? So from now, today, uh, the, the, the variables are called x. I don't distinguish between uh, t and other variables. OK? In some sense, this, uh, this is somehow in some, at some moment, more easy um, notation. OK. Now, let us consider the following operator. So define L of u equal the sum i from 1 to n b i of x d u to the xi, uh, where bi of x in omega, see, and consider the problem L of u equal to 0 in omega, open set contained in Rn, hmm, where bi, bi are say C1 functions, B1, Bi are C1 in omega for any i. Now f is not 0, now f is 0, and Bi is for any i equal 1, capital N. OK? So now my PD is this equal to 0. Huh? What is the relation between the notation of yesterday? So yesterday, yesterday was ut plus b dot grad u equal to 0. So this means that uh, notation of yesterday becomes what? Become this when I choose b1 of x. First of all, x is actually t and x. And then b1 of x is equal 1 and b2, bn of x is the b of yesterday, b of yesterday. OK, so simply, if you put b1 equal to 1, if you think about the first coordinate, x1 equal to t, then you end up with ut here. And then plus b dot grad u provided that b2, bn, you identified it with a constant vector b. So it's just a change of notation. This is more general, clearly. Hmm? Change of notation. This is more, more general. OK, so let us concentrate. So let, for the moment, uh, uh, let us concentrate on this new notation. So forget uh, the time now. So this is, of course, a first order. Uh, it, it is a first order PD because you have only just one derivative here. It is linear. This is clear. The coefficients now are the bi. They are non-constant because they depend on x. Non-constant coefficients. I assume bi to be c1. Okay. And this is a notation. It's just to remember linear operator, L-like linear, applied to a function u. So, and the problem is to find, and then to find the solution of what? So, now, if I want to reason like yesterday, I have to give an hypersurface, sigma, and an initial condition. OK? So now, uh, this hypersurface yesterday was very special because we had time in mind. And this was time equal to 0. Hmm? So it was like an initial condition. But now there is no time here. So how to assign now a boundary condition? Huh? We do this. So let sigma be a C1 hypersurface. Hmm? Uh, yesterday, omega was the half space. So yesterday, 
omega was the half space. Hmm? This was yesterday. And the yesterday sigma was t equal to 0. OK? Today, sigma is, instead of a hyperplane, it's just a hypersurface. Maybe it is curved, for instance. It's not flat in general. OK? And uh, is of class C1. And for simplicity, let me assume that without boundary, just uh, uh, and then let u bar, maybe the notation was, OK, let u bar be a given function uh, on, on sigma. Okay, of class C1. So this is slightly more general than what we have said yesterday. Okay, this is the setting. Okay. What's the meaning without ah, what's the meaning? The question is, what's the meaning without of a surface without boundary? Do you know what is the boundary of a hypersurface? Um, well, maybe it's not the case now how to define it, but let me give you some example. Uh, for instance, if you have a piece of plane, just a piece of plane, just a, a sheet uh, of paper in R3, so you have a sheet of paper inside R3, then the sheet of paper is, of course, a surface. But the boundary of this sheet of paper is just the curve, which is, say, on the, on the border. Okay. On the other hand, if the sheet of paper is infinite, is a, is a, is a plane, then there is no boundary. Okay. In this sense, so I don't want, I, I, I'm thinking about the generalization of an infinite plane. So an infinite surface may be a little bit curved, but without border. Hmm? I don't want to define now what is exactly the boundary of a surface, because I need some tools. But uh, So you have to think about this. You have, say, this is sigma, and this is, say, omega. Huh? And this is sigma. And I'm, I'm, I want to work, say, here in omega intersection sigma. So the problem is, more precisely, uh, problem, try to solve the following PD, say, in omega. Uh, or maybe in omega minus sigma, for instance. So say here. And then u sufficiently smooth, say c1 of omega. And then u equal u bar on omega intersection sigma. OK? So you want the. The initial condition u bar here, u equal to u bar here. Then you want to solve the PD, say, here, out of, out of, the, of the surface. Hmm? Of course, here, this is, if you think about time, this is space time, time space. Hmm? Omega, now, if you want to remember time, if you like, it's not necessary, but if you like, then we are in time space here. Yesterday, indeed, the situation was this. This was time, this was space, and this was sigma. And omega, say, was the half space. So maybe this is too asking too much, maybe. So we will see that. Uh, we, 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 we can maybe try to solve the problem not exactly on the wall omega, but maybe in a strip in a neighborhood of sigma. 
maybe we can hope to find a solution in a neighborhood. Not, not everywhere in Omega. Now we will see why. Anyway, this is, this is the problem, generalization of yesterday. So, however, yesterday there was a, yes? Yeah, you're right, exactly, thank you. So maybe we can do, thank you. Yeah, also yesterday, you're right, thank you. Omega bar, say, intersection of sigma. And then, uh, sorry, the, the, the other question was? Yesterday, yes, yes, maybe yesterday we said U C1 up to the boundary, right? So you see, now U is, uh, no, because, well, um, mm -hmm. uh, because you are thinking about the half space, but on the other hand, you see yesterday, we construct a solution for positive time, okay? But indeed, we could get a solution also for negative times. So maybe the better is to think about the wall space equal to omega, and now sigma is contained in omega. Okay, and I don't need this. Okay. Yes, because physically it's meaningful when t, when t is time, maybe it is uh, mm, reasonable to look for a solution in the future. Hmm? And so uh, we, we think about omega the half space. But on the other end, as you see, the proof, we can go also backward. So maybe omega is the whole space, if you wish. And then... Uh, and then sigma is contained in omega, okay? Okay, so uh, sigma, if you want, we can change this. So let me put it like this on sigma, and sigma is contained in omega. Okay? So. We have a sigma. Now the, the new sigma is this. Uh, so now without boundary in omega. Okay. So I don't have to worry about these two points. This is my sigma. Omega is open. And we are exactly in this picture. Okay. So now, uh, what I was saying is that yesterday we observed that one important condition was that the vector field 1b, b was constant. But the vector field 1b uh, was transverse to sigma. Remember, we had uh, the component uh, was 1. So this was 1, and this was b. Huh? And this vector field was transverse to sigma, exactly because of this component one here. Hmm? Transverse means that this is non-tangent to sigma. Okay, it's not like this. And this was very important for for solving our problem. Can you remember? Okay. Now. What could be the, the new condition now that we, it is natural to impose? Which, so we cannot hope to solve this if we do not impose a sort of transversality. Because this problem generalizes what we have said yesterday. And it was clear from yesterday that we need that 1b was transverse to sigma. But here, there is not, it is not written anything like that. So we need the transversality condition between the vector field by bi of x now and sigma. OK? So need c yesterday some transversality condition between the vector field B of x uh, and uh, sigma. Hmm? And we have to now give this notion now. Hmm? Uh, maybe I repeat, yesterday this was 1B. Uh, 
huh? and this was t equal to 0. And exactly because of this component equal to 1, these uh, were transverse. Okay. Okay. So which is the natural, uh, the natural new assumption that we have to do? Uh, okay. The natural assumption that we have to do now is we need some definition. So definition. So uh, let x in omega define uh, the set. Let me call it this way. So I take a point in omega, so b of x is well defined because b is defined in omega. And then I uh, define the set of, say, characteristic vectors at x for the operator L, set of characteristic vectors vectors for L at x as follows. It is a non-zero vector, which is orthogonal to the vector field B of x. Huh? So you have a vector field at the point x. You have a vector. And then you take uh, the orthogonal vectors to this. Definition, so this is definition one, definition two. So let sigma be a surface of class C, hypersurface, hypersurface of class C one. as before. Uh, uh, we say that sigma is characteristic uh, for the operator L at the point x on sigma if Ah, of class C1, C1, C1. C1 because I need to talk about uh, the tangent space or the normal vector, if you want. So I, 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 there should be not corners on the surface or cusps or something like strange like that, OK? So we say, so let, this is sigma. Okay, inside omega, like this. And I have a point x on sigma. Mm -hmm. And then I say that sigma is characteristic uh, for the operator L at x if the normal, one of the two unit normal, to sigma at x where this is uh, a unit normal normal to sigma 
at x. So it is simply, simply this. So you have the point x, OK? Then you have the tangent space to sigma at x. Let me denote it by, this is the tangent space. Let me denote it by tan x sigma. Hmm? This is a hyperplane. Hmm? And then I have one of the two unit normals, nu sigma this or the opposite, uh, or this or this, one of the two. It's not important. It's one of the two. So this is nu sigma. Um, new sigma x. Hmm? So if this vector, this vector, unit vector mu sigma, say, is a characteristic vector in this sense, so this means that mu sigma, that is the scalar product between mu sigma at x and bx must be equal to 0. OK? Nu sigma x dot bx is equal to 0. That is, a nu sigma is orthogonal to bx. Hmm? Or if you want, Equivalently, bx is tangent to sigma. Hmm? So if your vector field here, b, belongs to the tangent space, Say bx is like this, say this is bx. Then you say that this is this x is characteristic. Okay? Then definition three. We say that sigma is characteristic for L. That sigma is characteristic for the operator for the operator L for L if for any x in sigma it uh, if for any x into sigma uh, sigma is characteristic characteristic at x at x for L. So if at each point of sigma, b of x is tangent to sigma, hmm? simply. If this happens at all points of sigma, OK? Which is, by the way, the worst situation. Because remember, what we have said yesterday, this is sigma. Vector field was. Uh, uh, 1b, and the vector field was never tangent to sigma. Was never tangent to sigma. So this condition is, is bad, and we want to avoid it. OK, so we would say that sigma is non-characteristic. Finally, so we say that sigma is non-characteristic for L at x if this condition is not true, if nu sigma of x does not belong to k x at L, that is, Bx is not tangent, tangent to sigma at x. Is not tangent to sigma at x. And finally, 
we say that sigma is non-characteristic for L if it is non-characteristic for L at any x. Hmm? Yes. Ah, yes. The L, uh, the question is, you don't see the, the L on the right-hand side. Well, L is identified by the vector field. Because your, 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 uh, your, your uh, linear operator, L, was this. They were uniquely identified, you see, because L was the sum from 1 to n of bi of x du over dxi. So once you know bi, you know the operator L. And vice versa, if you have no L, you have B. So this, this, is, this L is hidden here, OK? OK. So what it is important to remember at the end, it, OK, so we say that sigma is non-characteristic at x, local, uh, pointwise um, definition. But then we say that sigma is non-characteristic for L if it at any point, x, it is non-characteristic for L. Hmm? So, uh, and this is what we want. So we continue now our analysis of the problem. So the new assumption that we do is the following. So assume to continue, to continue our analysis, assume sigma non-characteristic characteristic for L. That is, <coughs> uh, for any x in sigma, bx is non-tangent, does not belong to the tangent space to sigma. So this is now our assumption. Okay. So this this is an assumption uh, relating sigma and the operator L, or in other words, sigma and the vector field B. Hmm? So this is our assumption. Previous case, yesterday, uh, b was b of x was one b uh, with the notation of yesterday one b always non-tangent to sigma. So it is clear now that this definition, this assumption, generalizes uh, the transversality condition that we, uh, we observed yesterday. Hmm? OK. Let me make an example now. Okay. So let me make an example. Assume n equal to 2. And assume that L of u is equal to u over dx1. Huh? And assume that um, sigma is equal to sigma is equal to 
say x2 is equal to 0. Hmm? So, so, an omega is equal to R2. Uh, so, this is x1, this is x2. And when we have this operator, so, so b of x now is simply 1, 0. Hmm? Is it clear that b of x is equal to 1, 0? Because it is 1 times this plus 0 times the derivative with respect to x2. So b of x is this. At any point, so this is sigma. Okay. And b of x is, is 1, 0, which is therefore tangent at each point. At each point of sigma, b of x is clearly tangent to sigma. Hmm? So it is characteristic at any x. So sigma actually is characteristic for huh? now assume that I want to solve L of u equal to zero and u uh, in R2 say and u equal u bar on sigma hmm? so what I what I find here well I find the following if I if I find the solution huh? So I find that on sigma, if the solution is smooth, say on sigma, the u bar over the x1 must be equal to 0. Huh? Because this is the u over the x1 equal to 0, u equal to u bar here. And therefore, the derivative of u bar along x1 is equal to 0. But this is not reasonable, unreasonable unreasonable. Why? Because u bar is your initial condition. Hmm? And u bar is any initial condition of class C1. There is no, no reason for which u bar must, must have derivative equal to 0. No reason for this. u bar is any smooth function. Hmm? Uh, u bar is given and C1, but nothing else. U bar has no condition on its derivative. U bar is given. Huh? So in, in, in other words, uh, in other, so if you have understood this, from now on, it, it will be clear why we always assume that sigma is non-characteristic. Hmm? Ah, to be to make so the question is do you want sigma characteristic only at some and not would be enough say to un, uh, or could you allow say uh, sigma to be non characteristic unless say one point or two points and this is the question no to be as simple as possible i will assume that sigma is non characteristic at any point this is to make things simpler in this one first order PD situation. This is the simplest case. Um, well, okay. So let, let me comment once more because this is, uh, this is important to understand. So in other words, we will assume we shall assume, we shall assume sigma non-characteristic for L, for L, because otherwise, otherwise, uh, if, if sigma, say, is characteristic at least characteristic, characteristic 
uh, at in a neighborhood in a neighborhood in a neighborhood of x in sigma we would assign we would assign a condition on the tangential derivative of u bar a tangential derivative of u bar which is unreasonable which is not reasonable In the previous example, the tangential derivative was the derivative along the direction x1, which was tangential to sigma. Actually, it was the unique direction of sigma. And we were asking for this to be true, which is not reasonable. So more generally, if sigma is any hypersurface uh, C1, Asking uh, sigma to be, non to be characteristic in a neighborhood of a point x in sigma would mean uh, assigning the de tangential derivative of u bar along the vector field b to be equal to something, for instance, 0, which is not reasonable. OK? So from now on, we will always assume this. So now, the experience of yesterday was going to consider, now consider, the following system of ODEs, ordinary differential equations, uh, x dot equal b of x x of 0 equals some x bar into sigma. Hmm? Now, if you want to be really very, very precise, locally, you have the following picture. This is sigma, OK? This is sigma. Then you have the vector field b of x, which is transverse, say, for instance, is uh, like this smooth huh? this is b of x and then you have assigned uh, uh, you, you, you have a starting time 0 and the starting point x bar so x bar what is exactly x bar so to be precise you should since now sigma is a manifold, then you have to parameterize it locally. So you have to find sort of uh, open set here. Huh? And the parameterization, local parameterization. Let me call this, say, phi. Hmm? Let me call the parameters here sigma. So phi is a local parameterization local parametrization of sigma of sigma so taking some open set in r to the n minus 1 space of parameters regularly into rn so and uh, phi of sigma phi of sigma is, say, x bar. Huh? So this sigma is going exactly to this x bar. Huh? This is a way to, to describe your sigma. Huh? So locally, it is the image through a map, an embedding map, capi, uh, phi. And so any point x bar is coming from one parameter sigma through the embedding. OK. B of x is here, so this is Rn. 
And so x bar, if you want, is now phi of sigma. Hmm? So now consider the system of ODEs. Fine. Our problem, remember, let me write it here, is just uh, uh, the sum from 1 to n bi of x du over dxi equal to 0. This is a PD. This is a system of ODEs. How many ODEs are these? And capital N, OK? Capital N ODEs, the equations. Because capital X is going into Rn, OK? Yesterday, the system, remember, was yesterday was x dot equal 1b yesterday. Huh? And yesterday, uh, this uh, allows to identify the uh, S with, with time. And so at the end, uh, what it did was interesting was to study this just only uh, the, the last n components equal to b. Hmm? This, is, was, this was yesterday. OK. So now, now, which is the difference between yesterday and today? Yesterday was x dot equal to 1b. Uh, where b was constant, vector. And now we have x dot equal b of x. Where is the difference? Well, <laughs> the difference is that now, well, this is really an ODE. I mean, it's not so easy to solve it. Yesterday, the solution was explicit. And the solution, the trajectories were lines. Do you remember? Yesterday, the, the important fact that was that uh, we found uh, solution, the trajectory of the of the ODE were, were flat, were lines. Today, there, there is no reason to say that now the solutions to this are lines. Because the derivative is not constant anymore. Yesterday was a constant vector. Today, it is not constant. Hmm? This is the first remark. So today, if we are able to find the solution, the trajectories are not lines in general. Hmm? The second point that we have to be sure that we have a solution to this system of ODEs. So now you have to remember the uh, uh, existence and uniqueness and the dependence on initial condition of ODEs. Maybe you, have already, you already know this. So let, let me quickly say that, uh, so let me call this point uh, uh, problem one. So there is a theorem. And uh, if you want to look at the proof for this, one possible reference, but very difficult, however. But anyway, I, I, I give you a reference for this, is uh, Lectures on nonlinear hyperbolic equations. Well, this is a theorem on all these. You can find it in several books. This is a possible book. Please keep in mind it is a very, very difficult book. So you're not supposed to know it at all. Just if you are interested in, look at the first two or three or four pages, hmm? if, you, if you like. Hmm? Um, so the theorem says that Theorem. So let me rewrite here. Theorem. So there exists exists a unique solution 
let me call it x depending on s, which is the parameter with respect to, I'm, to which I'm differentiating as usual, and then also depending on the initial condition x bar, or if you want, uh, if you prefer, sigma. Huh? Since x bar is nothing else, any, a unique image of some parameter sigma, uh, I can make this depending on s or on x bar or sigma as you wish, I mean, you, as you prefer. Yesterday, yesterday we had this x bar, and it is clear, and this is a copy of our n minus 1. So the, the, phi, the capital phi yesterday was simply, so what, what is the situation of yesterday? Who, who, who is capital phi of yesterday? Well, capital phi is simply x bar into 0 x bar. <laughs> So there is an identification, really an identification between x bar and sigma, which is still x bar. I mean, uh, so I, I really so uh, this is the, the, uh, when this is flat. This is a, this is a plane, then and it was a horizontal plane at level zero, height zero. Then the phi was simply this phi, okay, x bar, x bar. So it's a trivial embedding. Okay, and so yesterday we put the dependence on x bar because it was reasonable. Today, if you want, maybe we can uh, uh, we can consider dependence on sigma or x bar as you prefer. Let me let me write dependence on sigma. So there exists a unique solution x of s and sigma for s less than or equal than some delta. So there exists delta. So there exists delta positive such that there exists a unique solution for short times S, of your system of ODEs. So this is a local in time existence. Now S is time. Okay, and you, you 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 don't since you don't know, you know that b is c one. But you don't know, say that b has some other magic properties like uh, global Lipschitz, for instance. So what you know, at the moment, is that this has a solution. Unique, but just for a, for some time, for some amount of time, but not for all times. Yesterday it was for all times. Because the line was globally for any s, for any s. But today we cannot. We are not sure about this. We just we can only say that for some positive time delta we have a solution, unique. This is of course because the vector field B is of class C one. Hmm? If B is not smooth like C one, then it it is much more difficult. Not only this, so this is the first uh, difference with, with respect to yesterday. Yesterday, the solution was global and was a line. Today, the solution is not necessarily a line. It's just a curve. Actually, is which curve? Well, it's the integral curve of this vector field. You see, if I want to draw the, the, the solution for short time, what I have to do is exactly to take those curves such that b is tangent to that curve. Hmm? So if I draw the vector field b in a neighborhood here, the curves solution to this are exactly the so-called integral curve, meaning that at each point of the curve, b is tangent to the curve, like this. These are the trajectories. Hmm? Is okay. Yesterday, of course, b was a vector, a constant vector, and the trajectory was the line, which is tangent to the constant vector. Hmm? Is it okay? Are there other questions, problems? Is it clear? Okay. So please feel free to ask if there is something which is not clear. I'm making. Hmm? So I'm happy to repeat. So 
so now I'm drawing the integral curves, which are the solution of our system of ODEs. You see, we have a solution like this. OK? So these are called integral curves. Integral curves of B. And I repeat, it means that at any point along the curve, B is tangent. This is B. OK. Etc. Hmm? You see, uh, what is a big difference now? Well, first of all, we have existence, but just for a fixed x bar. What happens if I change x bar to the existence time, delta? What happens? Well, because delta depends on x bar. So if I am here, say I live for one second. But if I'm here, maybe I live for one half second. And if I'm here, I live for 10 seconds. I don't know. The, the dependence now, the t time of life of the solution depends on, on the previously chosen x bar. Well, it is possible to show, say, at least in this local compact situation, say, in a piece of uh, sigma, that uh, delta is uniform with respect to the choice to x bar. So if I confine myself in a piece, compact piece of sigma, I can say that the solution lives for delta, but for all x bar. So at any point now, I am sure that my solution exists for delta, and delta is not depending on the point that I am choosing. Hmm? The, 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 this means exactly uniform delta. So delta is not going to 0 when I move x bar. Hmm? Then, moreover, it is also possible to prove that the dependence of x from s and x bar is smooth is C1, say. Actually, it is Lipschitz also with respect to this, but OK. So and x is C1, say. Hmm? Well, in the book of, uh, that I quote there, you, you find also the estimate which says that x actually depends in a Lipschitz way with respect to sigma. And the Lipschitz constant is related to the, well, anyway, the local Lipschitz constant of B. This is not so important at the moment. So we know that this dependence is smooth, say, sufficiently smooth at least. And next, there is another difference. You see what happens here. OK, maybe the solution uh, is like this. So it may happen that these trajectories at some moment meet together. Yesterday, our trajectories was this. Uh, and, and there were two interesting properties. First of all, that the trajectory was defined for all times. Hmm? It's a line. Second of all, that the, this situation does not happen. Uh, like, say like this. This was not the case of yesterday. Hmm? Because they were parallel, of course. <laughs> okay, But you see, if you think that uh, what we are trying to do is to define a solution here as the value of u bar here, this is, this is potentially very, very dangerous. Because if two of these objects meet at the point for positive time, then I don't know which kind of value I have to assign to the solution u if the value of u bar here or the value of u bar here is not clear. So this is a very dangerous situation. And it is possible to prove that if delta is sufficiently small, this doesn't happen for delta sufficiently small. Okay. 
Uh, so for delta sufficient involved, not only we have existence uh, of a solution, uh, the smooth dependence with, the initial, with respect to the initial condition, but we can also say that uh, um, if delta is sufficiently small, the integral lines, say, delta sufficiently small <coughs> implies that integral curves, integral curves do not intersect. So we are exactly in sort of situation like this. Here we have sigma. Here we have sigma. Then we are filling a neighborhood of sigma with integral curves, with curves, which do, do not meet each, each other. And they fill a neighborhood everywhere. Okay, so we are filling the neighborhood of sigma with these curves. Sorry for the picture, it's not perfect like this. Okay? So what are these, these pictures? So this is, this is simply the curve that at S, it associates x of s given that sigma. Hmm? So if sigma corresponds to this point, so sigma is here, sigma is mapped to this point here, then this piece of curve is the image of this map. Hmm? This is our situation. And finally, this gives give us exactly what we like, because then, then by construction, see, the solution u at x is equal to u bar at x of so and now I have to say to, to, to make rigorous what I, uh, I have to make rigorous what I what I want to say is to say that now there is no f the equation is homogeneous so the value of the solution here say the value of the solution here x will be the value of u bar here and what is here well, I have to take the integral curve passing to this point x, starting from a unique other point on sigma, and solving the PDE. So to, to, the, to be more precise, I have first, before saying this, I have to observe that there is a change of variable. There is a map from, so let me call OK, this uh, u and neighborhood in Rn minus 1. So there is a map from minus delta delta times u into a neighborhood, neighborhood of sigma. So let me call this object here. This is n neighborhood of sigma. And the map is the following. I associate to any s and any sigma here the solution x at time s starting from the point phi of sigma. OK? So let me repeat it. I have. The space of parameters, capital U, in Rn minus 1. Okay. Then I have uh, some uh, time delta. So I can think about this. Fix time S, fix a parameter sigma, hmm? 
Hmm? Sigma is here. Then I have phi of sigma x bar is here. Hmm? X bar equal to phi of sigma. And then I can consider the solution of my ODE starting from this point x bar for time s. Hmm? And this gives me a diffeomorphism between this re big rectangle and this neighborhood n by construction. This diffeomorphism between this and its image that I'm called n. I'm calling n the image of this. So given s and l and sigma, I can find a unique point. Conversely, this is invertible. So I can have the, the, the inverse object. Now I have a map from the neighborhood n into minus delta delta times uh, u. Uh, so I am the, the inverse map. The map is invertible with the inverse of class C1. And so at any x, I associate simply s of x and sigma of x. Of course, this diffeomorphism is not always uh, explicit. But this inverse diffeomorphism is, it exists. Hmm? And so my solution u of x will be exactly the solution u bar starting uh, from phi of sigma of x. OK? This is the solution that we have constructed. Uh, where is it? U bar of x c s of x phi of c of x. Okay. Okay. So I remember, I, I recall once more, given any point x in this neighborhood then, what do I do? Well, this x corresponds to a point s and sigma in this rectangle. Delta minus delta. So there is a point s and sigma here going to this point here. Hmm? So the solution u out of sigma in n here is what? Is the initial condition u bar where uh, u bar, sorry, here it is easy, even easier, sorry. Is even easier is the initial condition. Sorry, is easier. Sorry, phi of uh, sigma of x. So it is the initial condition u bar where here. What is this point here? Well, is uh, so the point x is going through this. So is exactly this point here. So this is the parameter. The parameter is mapped to the embedding to this point, exactly say the base point, the projection. And so u bar here, so uh, let, 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 me, let me recall once more. So I have a point x uh, in the neighborhood. And what do I have to do? Well, I have to find exactly that curve uh, which passed through x of our family. And then this curve which passed through x meets sigma in some point, and then I take u bar at this point. Th that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> so this is x. So this x is coming from one pair s sigma here. OK? In particular, uh, uh, sigma 
is mapped to the embedding to this point here. This is phi of sigma. Huh? And so I take, so, and if I take the solution of our system of ODEs, it starts from here and pass through this x and fill a little bit the name. And so our uh, u at x will be the value of the initial condition at this projection point, x bar, or phi of sigma. OK? So what, what is really important here is the, the invertibility, the invertibility of, this, uh, of this map S sigma into the trajectory uh, solution of the system of ODEs. Okay? Starting from uh, this physical point, phi of sigma, leaving for some time S. Okay? So you see, it's a little bit implicit. Uh, anyway, um, now, the home, home exercise maybe would be generalize home generalize this generalize this to the problem say uh, sum from 1 to n bi of x d over the xi of u x equal some given function f given say c1 of omega given so the, the exercise consists in it is uh, uh, well try to find the solution with the method of characteristics Yesterday, we, we studied this problem, but in the special situation, yesterday was, yesterday, remember, we have studied this problem, but with pi, p of x equal 1 b. And we found that the solution was the u bar at the previous time, say, but then there was, a, 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 there was an integral between 0 and t of a function depending on f uh, properly with proper variables. So, so and, and here is the same, essentially. But you have to try to find, to reconstruct the solution. OK? Now, our linear operator that we have studied up to now, you see, is not, I mean, even if this, this, uh, this PD is one of the simplest, uh, the solution, a local solution, is not so easy to find, as you have seen. For me, it's not so easy, in my opinion. And, of course, a problem is due to this uh, uh, to the regular, the smoothness of bi. Now, it's, it would be very interesting to study the problem when bi is less smooth than c1, but this becomes quickly too difficult. So uh, we will confine ourselves to this. So what can we do in order to make the problem more general? Well, is to consider now the following pd. Instead of, instead of weakening the regularity, the smoothness of the coefficients, let, let's still take C1, but consider a little bit more general problem. Equal to f of x. The u of x, x. So now uh, uh, I have given not only b as before, but I have given also given also a function c, c1 omega, and f, c1 omega. So this is still a linear operator. There is a new piece. 
a zero, so called, the so-called zero order piece, zero y, because this piece depends linearly on u, but there are no derivatives. So it's called zero order uh, term. And so uh, if we define again L of u equal to sum as before, the i of x, the i u of um, the u over the x i, we are interested in studying the following problem: L of u equal f minus c times u. Hmm? So uh, it is, this is usual in PDs. You uh, isolate the principal part of the operator, in some sense. Principal meaning the part where you have the highest derivatives. So here, the highest derivatives are first order. Here, there are no derivatives. So I isolate this part. And then I consider this problem. OK? And again, we want to couple this uh, with, uh, um, with an initial condition. So sigma non-characteristic for L, for the principal part of the PDE, as before, exactly the same definition. Hmm? And then we want to study this problem. This coupled with u equal some c1 function u bar on sigma. So this is what we want. So uh, slowly, we are coming to uh, more and more difficult first order PD. We started from uh, constant coefficients and homogeneous and independent of u in this, with, without this term. Then we passed constant coefficients, but with f, non-homogeneous. Then we pass to non-constant coefficient and with this equal to 0. Then we pass to non-constant. This is an exercise now for you. Exercise uh, non-constant coefficients with uh, non-homogeneous, non-homogeneity. And finally, more generally, uh, any first order linear first order uh, PD with non-constant coefficients. So now there is a new term here. And this is not so, I mean, it's an important uh, generalization. It's not so immediate. So now we want still to use the method of characteristics. So still we want to uh, construct a local solution, local meaning in a neighborhood of sigma, just only in a neighborhood. But there is this more difficult, this, this, this new part. Yeah. What do we do? So which is now the system of characteristics that we have to consider? Okay, do you have suggestions for, for this? The, the, we have to find the correct system of ODEs in order to solve uh, this problem. So yesterday, I think that we, we saw something. So you have to want to make an exponential change of variable, yes. for instance, like? U equal exponential d multiplied something, and you find d. Ah, this is maybe a good, uh, if you are able to change variable. So his, his suggestion, he says, why don't we try to change u into a new variable, say v of x, which is uh, sort of uh, is equal to, say, e to some uh, coefficient times u of x or something like that, a transformation of u into some new v, so that v satisfies something without this uh, zero order term. Well, uh, I think that, well, if you try to do this, if it is possible, as a home exercise, and try to find the transformation, OK? This, this would be. This, if this can be done, would be interesting so that you use the previous case to find v, and then you invert your transformation and you go back to u, if it is possible. 
But I want now to um, <clears throat> not to do such a sort of trick because at the end I, I, I want to, uh, to find out a system of ODEs which will be even more general applicable to more general PDEs, more general than this. Uh, what I would like to go, what I would like to, to study would be more general than this sort of going back. Now I write it because this is classical. Um, uh, what is a very interesting equation is this. And so for this, I still have to find the system of characteristics, which probably is suggested by this problem, and which is the difference between this and this. And this now is not linear anymore. It's not linear in you, because you have the product u, ux. So, uh, so I, don't use the, I don't want to uh, consider the trick, because I want to find a system of characteristics that I hope to be applicable also in some nonlinear case, like this. And <clears throat> so, so suggestion on what could be, please, if you have some suggestion on what could be now the system of all these to consider. Remember that yesterday we wrote at some moment a system into in X and also in Y. Huh? You remember? So, so I think that still we can try x dot equal b of x, OK? And this x of 0 equals some x bar equal phi of c. This is, I think, it's somehow reasonable. But then this is not enough. What could be another? equation that we, we, we have to, to couple to this. Remember in the discussion of yesterday. At some moment, we, we couple this with another equation. Uh, y dot equal, it was yesterday was f of capital X. Right, this was yesterday. And we observed the following. Well, this is, this is uncoupled with respect to this. Namely, first I solve this. I find x, then I put here x, and I find y. This was yesterday. And yesterday, uh, the, this term was not present. Okay. Now, what is the reasonable modification of that OD? Minus. C of capital X times what? Times Y. Initial condition Y of 0 equal U bar of X bar. Hmm? Do you agree? It is somehow reasonable to think about, to, to, to consider this is. Now, you see, which is the difference with respect to yesterday? That now, these are really somehow coupled together in some sense. No, not so coupled, but I mean, still more precisely. Yesterday, given capital X, I can simply integrate and find Y, right? This was yesterday. Today is not so easy. Not so difficult, however, because I can find capital X here. And then I have a, an ODE given capital X. Now this is a first order ODE, linear first order ODE in Y. It's, it's not just an integration problem. I have to solve another ODE, but what, it is linear in Y. So still, still uh, this seems doable. Still I can first solve this and then this. Somehow. OK? OK, so uh, well, time is over. Uh, we will continue from this, uh, from the analysis of this uh, linear first order PD. And maybe 
I can give you a preliminary exercise, uh, which is, by the way, maybe if you are not able to do this exercise, don't worry, because still we have to discuss a little bit this. But exercise, and we will do this exercise uh, in the next, uh, the next uh, lecture. So we, we will do this in class. So the exercise, so consider n equal to 3. And consider the following uh, problem, first order, mm. solve x1 plus, sorry, x1 du over dx1 plus 2, x2 du over dx2 plus du over dx3 equal 3 times u, so it is exactly in this form with f equal to 0, huh? and c constant equal to minus 3. Uh, <coughs> u equal u bar of x1 and x2. The no now the notation is clear because sigma on sigma, which is x3 equal to 0. Huh? So try to find the solution to this. OK. Check that uh, the operator is, uh, that the surface sigma is, character is non characteristic for the operator, of course. Check all assumptions, smoothness of coefficients, smoothness of sigma, smoothness of everything. And then I, I tell you which is the solution. The solution that you have to find is the solution that you have to find is u of x must be equal to u bar of x1 e to the minus x3 comma x2 e to the minus 2 x3. If I'm not wrong, the solution should be this one. So u bar is the initial condition given u bar c1. You see, then you have the u bar at some points, and then there is also this exponent, exponential e to the 3x3, if I'm not wrong. Okay, 